tutorial we're going to look at getters and setters in C++. Getters and setters were all the rage in the early days of object-oriented programming and they're still used a lot, although some people say that you should try to avoid them in C++. But we're going to look at them here because they are still very important to know about and sometimes you need them. Um, so um, getters and setters are just methods for getting and setting values in a class, for getting and, setter, uh, getting and setting instance variables. Let, let's take a look at that. So I've got this project here, basic project I've created. And I'm going to right click it and go to new C++ class. And let's give this a name, I'll call it person. I won't put it in a namespace. And I'm going to tick to say that I want a constructor and destructor. Um, because, well, let's have just the constructor actually, because we don't really need the destructor. And I'll click finish. So, uh, if you're modeling a person in C, you're going to have some attributes like name and age and whatever other data you need to put in there to capture whatever aspects of a person you want to capture. For the purposes of this tutorial, let's just give person a, let's say, let's just give them a name. So I'm going to, above the public section here, I'm going to have a private section and I'm going to type string name. So we get an error there and that's because we haven't included the, um, the right header for string. Let's do that. So at the top above the class here, below this define thing, I'm going to put um, define preprocessor directive, I should say, <laughs> rather than thing really. Um, let's put include iostream. On some compilers you might need to say iostream.h or you might, need, you might even need to include string or even string.h. And I'm also going to put using name space standard. And I believe with this compiler that will give us string. Oh yeah, and it's a lowercase s. I always forget because it, it does vary. But I, th I think without these it wouldn't work. Yeah. So string class is defined uh, somewhere in our stream for this compiler at least. Uh, we, can, we can set a value for name for this person. Let's, let's do that. So let's go to um, person.cpp. Here's the constructor. Let's say that name equals George. Now um, we can create a person object here in, um, in our main cpp file. Let's say here person person. So I've been taking care to give my classes uppercase first letters. So if I want to, I can I can give the actual variable the same name as the class, with, but with a lowercase letter. Some people think that's really bad, but I, I, I quite like doing that. Um, and uh, now, well, we can't do much with person at the moment. What we could do is we could give it a method um, that outputs details about this person. Let's do that. Let's say. Um, I'll call it toString. So uh, Java actually has a method called toString and the idea is that returns a string that shows you information about your object. So let's do a similar thing here in C++. So I'll make toString return a string like that. And we'll go to, we'll go to uh, person.cpp and implement this toString method. Let's say string person colon colon toString We've seen all of this stuff before, and I'm going to just return name for the moment so that we can have a way of getting the data out of that person. Or we could say something like person's name is plus name. That just gives us kind of a way of outputting information. We, we can include the age in there if we had an age or whatever, whatever other details we have. Uh, oh, that says George is not correctly spelled, but it is, um, so I'll, I'll ignore that. Let's go back to the, the main um, function here, and let's just say cout and string. So toString is returning a string containing details about the person, and because it's returning a string, we can just use it in cout. So this, this will be outputting whatever this actually returns and that's a string so we can output strings with C out so we're good. I think we we may need um, in yeah we've already got I stream in here 
and using namespace standard. So let, let's just run this. And with a bit of luck, it's going to, I've already compiled it once, so I should just be able to click the run button. Um, while I'm waiting for that, the, the, the thing here is that sometimes you, you want to be able to get and set variables in, a, in an object directly. And uh, that, that's not always the case because um, if, if you allow people to get and set, well, let's just deal with this error. So it says um, person, person, yeah, I've got to include person.h. I always forget something, so I'm glad that the compiler picks it up. Let's include that person.h. Sometimes you want to get and set variables within your class. Let's save it and see if it builds. But um, if, if you do that, it's almost as bad as exposing the actual variable directly. We'll see this in a minute, but some people say that it's not a good idea. So it says person's name is George here. Now, what if we want to be able to change that name? We want to get it and set it. So let's first look at a set method. If we go to person.h here, I'll give this a method called well, it will have no return type and I'll call it set name. This is kind of a standard format, so we call it set something, lowercase s. And because I'm following this convention of capitalizing the subsequent words in every kind of function or variable name, I'll give the name an uppercase n. And then we'll go to person.cpp and implement that. So I'll say void person colon colon set name. And we're going to pass this a string name, that, and we're going to use that string to change the name of the person. Let's say string name. In fact, being as I've already called this name, for the moment I'll, I'll call it something else, and we'll see a better way of dealing with that in the future. Let's call it string new name. And in there, all I'm going to do is say name, that's the name of the person defined in the class, equals new name. So this, this is called a set method. Let's take a look at this error. Method declaration not found. Yeah, I need to define the prototype as well. Let's copy this. Yeah, I just did it already. Oh yeah, but I missed out this string new name. Okay, so what, what I've got here is I've got a method here that's, that's taking a string. And that method is simply setting a value for name setting a new value for the name of the person associated with the class. So let's, let's actually use that. So here in my main method, when we create the person, the constructor runs, and that sets the, the name to George. It doesn't have to do that, though. It could just not set it at all. But now we could say person.setName. Let's imagine George has had a sex change and set him to Georgina. Or maybe he's uh, just a transvestite, I, I don't know, but anyway. So now we can run that again. And we get now, person's name is Georgina. So that's the set method, it's pretty simple. We're just using stuff we've already seen. But the thing is, it's a method with the name set that takes some, some value that you want to set one of the variables of the class to name in this case, and it just sets that value to whatever you pass in. And this is how you use it. So it's, it's pretty simple. And uh, if you can't remember all this stuff, if you even type that first, then it's just a question of everything else we've done has, has just been to get that to work. That was the whole purpose of everything we've done. So that's a set method or a setter, also called a mutator. Some people think this is bad because it's almost as though we've exposed this variable directly. It's not quite that bad because we could document uh, that we've got this set method. And then if later on, for some reason, we need to change how this class works and we need to change string name to something else and store it in a different way, we can still do that without, alter without altering this method and hence without altering um, the documentation of this class because only this, only this bit here would actually be documented, only the set method prototype. And we can change this if we want to. So it's not as bad as exposing the variable, and making it public and allowing people to change it directly. But it's getting there, and that's why some people think you should avoid this. 
Let's give it a get method as well to get that name. So I can say uh, string, so it'll return a string. We'll call it get name like this, and it won't have any parameters. And then we'll implement get name. So we'll go to person.cpp and we'll say void, no, sorry, string person colon colon get name. And all that's going to do is return name. So it allows us to get the value of the name for this person. And we'll go to uh, getters and setters.cpp. This is our main function. And let's say see out um, name of person with get method. And uh, let's just use another one of these chevrons and say person put to operators, I should say, person.getName, like that, and endler. So if, if we run this, then we should get name of person with get method, Georgina. So this um, two string method that I implemented, that's, um, that's almost a get method, but the idea behind this is we could put more details in it if we wanted. So that's, that's getters and setters. It's just very simply uh, a, a, a method called set something or other that lets you set the value of an internal variable in the class. Well, it doesn't have to, but usually by creating get and set methods, you're implying that that variable exists. But of course, it doesn't have to exist. You could store this name in some other way, in an array or something, and the end user of this class would never know. And we've also got this get method to get the value for that um, variable. So yeah, it's best to try to avoid this, but sometimes you do need it. At least you need a get or a set, one of the two. So to practice this, the thing is um, just as long as you can remember basically what this program does, never mind to string, I just put that in just so we could see something happening early on. But if you can get your program so that you, you can have a class and you've got a set something or other and you've got a get something or other, then then you've understood. If you can do that, you've understood the purpose of this tutorial. So I'd, I'd advise creating a class, could be person, could be car, could be any, any kind of class that represents something, and uh, give it some variables and define like um, a get and set method for each of the variables in your class and see how that goes. So that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy 